Welcome back to No BS TS, and it's time for another challenge. Now, having looked at generics, it's time to actually try out our generic skills. And if you're on Twitter, you might have seen people bragging about something along the lines of, I can do everything with reduce. And so we're going to try that today. The challenge is to reproduce for each filter and map using reduce. So, and they have to be type safe. So I'm going to let you go to that. And we'll be back in just a bit. Okay, we're back. While you were away, I watched all the Star Trek movies, and Star Trek II is still the best. Okay, so here's going to be my take on how to do this. So let's we'll start off with an easy one. Let's start off with For Each. So I'll call this one My For Each. And we know it's going to be a generic, so I'll just use a generic type in there. And then I'm going to take an array of items. And then the callback, let's call it for each funk or something, is going to take an item and it's going to return void. And then the whole thing is going to return void. Okay, so how am I gonna do this redu with reduced? So let's do items.reduce and we'll take our, that'll take an accumulator and then a value and then within that, we're going to call the for each func with that value. And then what am I going to return out of all this? I'm going to return undefined. And we're going to start with undefined as our starting point. And there we go. So that's a pretty decent for each. Let's actually give it a try. So we'll do for each on a, a, b, c. And then our function is going to take that parameter. And then let's do a console log with that. You know, for each and then that value. All right, now I've got TS node globally installed. So let's try it on index.ts. And there we go. For each on A, B, and C. Looking good so far. So one out of three down. Okay, let's do filter next. So function my filter. Again, we're going to take a type. And we know we're going to return a, an array of those types. And we know that our input is going to be an array of those types. And let's call this the filter func or predicate, if you prefer. And in this case, we're going to return a Boolean saying whether we're in or out. You're in or you're out. OK, so let us return the items.reduce. And then we're going to take our accumulator and our V. And then we're going to take our filter function and apply it to each one of those V's. And we're either going to get back true or false. So in, in the true case, we're going to take the existing array, which we get from the, the starting point. We'll get there in a second. And then we're going to add on the current value. Otherwise, we're just going to return the existing array. And we're going to start with our array. OK, pretty cool. So let's take a look. So what's going to happen here is we're going to start with an array. And then that's going to come in as the accumulator. We're going to look at the first item. We're going to decide whether it's in or out. And then uh, let's see. So if it's in, then we're going to take the existing array, which is nothing, and then add our item onto it. Otherwise, we're just going to return the original array, which again is nothing. And then we're just going to kind of lather, rinse, repeat that all the way through. So let's do that. Let's try my filter func on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then on that, ah, check a look at that. We got a number in there. That's awesome. And we're going to say if, uh, if v mod two is zero, then we're going to print that out or we're going to go and bring that in. So let's we'll do a console log on this so we can actually see it. All right. Let's check this out. So run it again. Cool. And now it's giving us just the, the even numbers because one mod two is one, two mod two is zero, three mod two is one, and so on and so forth. Okay. All right. And here's, I guess, probably the more complex one of them all, which is my map. So function my map. And again, we'll start with pretty much the exact same thing. 
but so let's take you know, map func. So in this case, we are taking a T, but we're, what are we outputting? We're outputting something different, right? So we might, let's call that um, K. And then, so you have to define that there's another templated value in there called K. And in this case, we're gonna return an array of K, not of T. So that allows us to basically change the type through our map function. So our map function takes an input, say a number, and returns a string. So this would be a number and this would be a string. Okay, let's uh, go back over here and do a little copy paste. Okay, and then I'm going to return this array over here. Let's do something like that. And then I'm just gonna take that map func and apply it to the incoming value. And it's not happy with that. Let's take a look and see what the problem is. So any is not timeable to type T. Mm, all right, well, it probably doesn't know what this is initially. So I'm gonna just define this as an array of K and see if that helps us. And it does, so fantastic. All right, okay, so let's go and try and run this. Let's go and take our map, put it in there. And then in this case, we'll just how about multiply it by 10 and then turn it into a string. How about that? Okay. And let's run it again. And there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, begin 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 in a string. Awesome. Well, I hope this exercise helped you learn a little bit more about generics and get some confidence with it. Generics is incredibly important to understanding TypeScript and fundamental to what we're going to learn coming up. I can't wait to show you some more great generic stuff with key of and also with these amazing utility types. Really exciting stuff. But in the meantime, of course, if you like this video and this challenge, hit that like button and share it with your friends. In addition, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you'll be notified the next time one of these videos comes out.